John Murray works homicide for the New York State Police. As I walk down towards the end of the uh, trail here and reaching the river, I, could, I noted that there was a um, concrete shelf-like area, and against that shelf area, there was the body of a woman lying partially submerged in the water. Her back were, was scraped up from what looked like uh, her sliding down this rough surface of the concrete into the river. Initial signs point to murder. An autopsy will later determine the victim had been strangled and confirms the presence of semen and the possibility of a sexual assault. Meanwhile, John Murray needs to ID his victim. Her pocketbook wasn't found. There was nothing here that uh, indicated who she was. An APV is put out, and investigator Murray waits for someone somewhere to recognize his victim. Marianne Diso is worried. She has not seen her daughter, 19-year-old Diana, since last night. It is now going on 11 p.m. Her body was found. We're sitting watching the news at 11 o'clock, and they had said that they had, you know, found an individual on the other side of the Hudson in North Greenbush. And I looked at my husband, and he looked at me, and I said, oh, no, I said, this can't be. The family contacts police, who put them in touch with investigators working the Hudson River case. One of the investigators had her, um, her brush, and, you know, he showed me that, and he said, is this hers? And I said, yes. Eastman is able to develop a full SDR DNA profile, enters it into CODIS, and gets lucky. It hit on a convicted offender by the name of Ray Keller. Dave Madden numbers. jumps on the Ray Keller lead, teaming up with investigators Steve Ortiz and Debbie Comar. Right. What was the connection between Ray Keller and Diana Dasso? Yeah, we really worked that hard. I mean, we had a lot of investigators in both your unit and in our unit. We really beat the bushes on that, and we, we got help. Keller has no apparent ties to Diana, but the team finds his criminal past to be telling. Just looking at his criminal history, which has sexual assaults in it, rapes, uh, again, that was another thing that to us indicated he was a real good suspect in this cold case. Keller is serving up to 25 years for raping a girl in 1989 in New York. Detectives decide to talk to Keller's victim before speaking with the suspect himself. She was scared to death of Ray Keller, and one of her first or second comments were, he tried to kill me. Komar notes that the attack bears a striking similarity to Diana Diso's case. Like Diana, this victim was choked. Unlike Diana, she lived to tell the tale. I can't emphasize enough the importance of her describing his, his neck hold on her um, and knowing that cutting off someone's air supply like that could cause death in a very short amount of time. Investigators have Keller's DNA at the scene and a similar act. One of my big fears was that he was going to shut us right out. Yeah, I had sex with her, so what? Investigators need to get inside their suspect's head, get him thinking and then get him talking. Dr. Richard Hamill is a psychologist who spent the past 22 years talking to sexual predators. In 2004, he's tapped by cold case detectives who want to get inside the head of Ray Keller. If he thought he was being misunderstood or might be misunderstood, uh, it was possible that he would step forward and provide incriminating information toward the goal of showing people that he uh, was not such a bad guy. The date, the time. The plan? Hit Keller with the DNA evidence and give him the opportunity to own up and put himself in the best possible light. On December 17, 2004, Detectives Ortiz and Madden have a face-to-face -face with inmate Ray Keller. They put me in a corner, um, and Officer Ortiz was basically a foot away from me. So I just told him 1987, um, he had an encounter with a girl named Diane Desso, and he indicated, you know, he does not know who that name is. And I'm like, well, I don't know, you know, it's 
17 years ago, you know, a long time ago, whatever. And when he said he didn't know anything about it, her or had any connection to her or any recollection to her, it's then when Steve showed him the picture. And that's when they asked me, you know, do you know who this is? And uh, I was like, no. And We were in a good place. Because even if he continued to deny, we knew from our DNA evidence that he knew her. He was there with her. And by denying it, it, it really, it helped. But yet, we weren't quite there yet. What we wanted, we were there for, was we wanted to know exactly what happened and how it happened. And we wanted him to tell us that. That's when detectives hit Keller with their trump card. The DNA match between Keller and Seaman found at the scene. And after, I'd say, 20 to 30 minutes, he just looked up into the ceiling and said, hypothetically, if I, to tell, if I were to tell you what happened, how do I know that you wouldn't tell the truth when you left this room? When he said that to us, I knew we had him. With audio tape rolling, Keller takes detectives back to 1987 and the night Diana Diso was murdered. Hi, Ray T. Keller, on December 17th, 2004. State the following to be as true to my memories at this time. I was high on coke, um, drunk, and wild. You know, I guess you could say I was looking for you know, maybe some sex. You know, I'm not going to sit here and say maybe, you know, that that wasn't in my mind. Keller says he was driving around when he spotted a young woman hitchhiking and pulled over. I asked her where she was going, said she was going home. She got in the vehicle. Um, I asked her what was going on. She said that she had a fight with her boyfriend and she seemed upset. I guess you could say she was in an angry mood hurt, whatever, uh, from what I recollect. The two ended up at a secluded area near the Hudson River. We then went out to the back of the truck, and that's when we had sex, but not by her choice. Keller sexually assaulted Diana, then allowed his victim to get dressed. That's when Diana Diso made a comment that probably cost her life. I remember her saying that she was going to tell. At some point, something snapped inside of me. Next thing I knew, I had my my arm around her neck and throat and a choke call from behind. I had Diane by the back, by the throat, my arms around her throat, and I was just squeezing. And She was struggling, but couldn't say anything because of the chokehold. Just anger, just anger was going through my mind as I was just, you know, squeezing, squeezing. I was just squeezing. Diana collapsed. Keller was left holding her body. I must have believed at that time that she was dead. I must have thought that, or if, if I didn't think that she was dead, I guess I must have thought that I put her in the water, she will be dead. I then dragged her over from the back of the truck by her shoulders to the embankment and pushed her down towards the river. I left and went home. Detectives Ortiz and Madden have pushed the right buttons, and their suspect confesses exactly as Dr. Hamill predicted. We knew what he did, and everybody was going to know what he did, and now he needed an opportunity to try to make himself look as, 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 as best as possible. Keller is sentenced to 22 years to life for raping and murdering Diana Diso. I'm completely, you know, I'm truly sorry for what I've done, you know, and all the people I've hurt, you know, and I've got nobody else to, you know, nobody to blame but myself, you know, I mean, I did what I did. Um, 